Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, look at yourselves, Destiny, Service, Peasants, Castles, Minions, Citizens. I'm Useful Idiot. Welcome. And today I'm going to go back and uh, bitch about the good old USA. And uh, when I'm bitching about the US, USA, of course I'm going to bitch about the government. Because that's uh, our basic problem in the USA. And uh, one of my favorite things to pick on, and I have this in common with my compatriot, John Barleycorn. And uh, so he'll really appreciate this video because uh, we're getting back to uh, the, the bloat and fat in our government. And in this case, the gravy train for federal employees. And uh, uh, once again, uh, we have this massive bureaucracy. But if you think about just the fact that the uh, Department of Homeland Security now has 250,000 employees, and that's uh, only the latest department that was created uh, after a 9-11, so it's only been around for uh, uh, 12 years or so, and uh, um, 13 years, and um, they have these uh, massive benefits programs, um, and everybody knows, of course, about all the, the pensions, uh, the much higher salaries than the private sector, uh, all the benefits, all the holidays, um, etc., but uh, you get into some other programs that just really add to what a big fat gravy train it is. Uh, it explains why politicians become politicians. It be explains why uh, people go into the uh, government sector and explains why people in the government sector are very supportive of these politicians. They all have the same uh, drive here and end up with the same uh, gravy train. And uh, just like politicians, uh, our career politicians, uh, government workers, our career government workers. So anyway, let's get down to the gruesome details. We have a, a, a government accounting office report, and they looked at a three-year period between 2010 and 2013, and over 57,000 federal workers were put on administrative leave for 30 days or more. So uh, in the scheme of things, that's a, that's a small number. But the fact that uh, taxpayer dollars go so that uh, nearly 60,000 federal employees can go on administrative leave for 30 days or more. And uh, I want to ask uh, how many people out there uh, who work in the private sector have the ability uh, to be put on a, a, a month's uh, paid vacation in order to, to sort out uh, the details uh, of your job. And of course, we know also know that police, for example, are often put on administrative leave uh, after shootings and, and other events and uh, so if there's some sort of investigation going on and they get uh, a lot of paid time off and uh, it, just, it just is in sharp contrast to what uh, we in the private sector uh, we don't have these kind of cushions and uh, when you get into the details of this report 53,000 of those 57,000 were paid uh, from one to three months so one to three month paid vacations and a, a, a small percentage, relatively 4,000, uh, were had three months to a year, and fewer than 100 of these had a year to three years paid administrative leave. So uh, still pretty outrageous that 100 people or, or 4,000 people, um, um, either of those categories, ends up with three months to a year or a year to three years of just these paid vacations. Uh, this is at a total cost of $775 million, so upwards uh, pushing uh, up into the territory of a billion dollars paid in administrative leave for federal employees. And that's just for that one uh, three-year period. And a lot of these uh, have to do with uh, whistleblowers, although as you would imagine, um, there aren't that many whistleblowers. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, personnel disputes and misconduct accusations. So this makes it all the more insulting uh, that all this uh, uh, billion dollars of paid vacations is just to sort out misconduct uh, accusations and uh, personnel disputes. So uh, once again, I ask how many in the private sector can indulge in this sort of nonsense? And another way it's used too, a, a good example, is Lois Lerner um, uh, uh, who resigned from the IRS uh, under, in, in the scandal and uh, just before she uh, officially retires. So she resigns, but she gets four months of paid vacation 
and then uh, hits her retirement mark uh, so she can continue to get her uh, government pension, I would assume. I don't know the details. Uh, anyone can feel free to correct me on that. So there's there's one example of these, these extra uh, paid vacations that uh, a lot of uh, federal employees get. And, of course, a lot of these benefits are available to uh, local uh, government workers as well. And uh, but let's get to uh, this other story that ties in with that, and that's because we have uh, a credit card problem uh, with federal employees as well. It turns out that there's uh, 3.5 million charge card accounts uh, for government employees, and this is run through the General Services Administration, and everybody's already uh, familiar with the excesses of the, uh, the General Services Administration uh, throwing uh, lavish parties and uh, uh, spending uh, a lot of money um, for those parties. But uh, it's the largest charge card program in the world, and it was set up in 1998 just for uh, all 350 federal agencies. And it's called Smart Pay, and uh, it's uh, on a massive scale. I'm sure most people haven't thought about this, but uh, it's pretty outrageous once again that uh, we have these uh, free money uh, given uh, credit cards uh, and this free money given to all these. Uh, federal employees. And I want to uh, remind everyone, too, that when you think about uh, the, the amount of uh, money generated by government credit cards given to federal employees, a, a, a fairly uh, large amount of consumption, some of the only consumption that's going on these days, uh, I would imagine, uh, is is actually the mo uh, government uh, passing out these credit cards to, to federal agencies. So just another fraud uh, uh, going into the recovery and going into the economy, when uh, in 2011 there was 100 million transactions on government credit cards, 30.8 billion dollars in charges, a staggering numbers. Uh, in 2012 uh, it was a little less, 95.6 million transactions, uh, and, and 29.32 billion dollars in charges. So think about that, 30 billion dollars going into the economy once again just uh, on credit for one thing but also uh, government finance credit and uh, boy what a shocker turns out uh, guess who runs the uh, General Services Administration smart pay credit card accounts for federal employees Citibank, US Bank and JP Morgan Chase and I'm sure they've got some uh, pretty nice uh, interest rates on those too and, uh, and that's without going into how much um, how much uh, financial problems there are with these cards? I don't know how much, how many uh, government employees uh, have problems paying these uh, bills or default um, or or just uh, stop paying them. And uh, what kind of mechanisms are in play in in the government to address these issues? I would assume none. Uh, I'm sure I would assume there's hardly any uh, uh, oversight whatsoever. And in fact, there's a, a, a government Accounting Office audit from 2008. Uh, it's the only one I have, I have figures for here, and it showed that 41% of purchases made on these government credit cards were inappropriate, um, and 48% of uh, transactions on these gro uh, government transactions of $2,500 or more violated federal rules. So that goes to show that at least 50% of these cards are being abused. And uh, that means $15 billion in fraudulent charges by government employees uh, using yet another example of the government uh, gravy train. Uh, and there are some uh, specific examples. One was a U.S. Postal Service worker who spent $1,100 on his government credit card over six months for online dating. Or a, a U.S. Forest Service uh, worker who wrote her boyfriend $640,000 in convenience checks over six years. So how much uh, oversight do you think there is if someone can write convenience checks for six years to the tune of $640,000? Uh, so there's a, a two good examples of uh, more uh, government federal worker gravy train. It's uh, bad enough that we play uh, lifetime pensions, which are then passed on to the spouses. Uh, it's, it's enough that uh, we pay for uh, government uh, health care for all federal uh, workers 
for the lifetime. Uh, it's bad enough that they make a much higher pay um, than uh, the private sector, and uh, we have this uh, huge bloated bureaucracy. And yet, on top of that, uh, they get uh, credit cards and uh, paid vacations. It's like being on a game show. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?